Asus did a stinky. Graphics cards are getting cheaper. And Ratchet and Clank lied to you. What's up everybody, let's get into the hot news. I, I'll i enjoy my breakfast and you will watch this video. Yeah. Brett is not here right now, so you get he's, he's these sleepy. guys. He's sleepy. He's sleeping. Just FYI, today's gonna be a weird episode. We got this covered, but uh, we're not usually doing this. We're, I'm gonna do it better than Brett. Yeah. First up, Asus, you, Reese, did you hear this? The ROG ally is killing micro SD cards. It's killing them dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently something with the heat sink is actually, whenever the system gets too hot, it is just blowing up that little reader in there. Absolutely murdering those SD cards. Mm -hmm, the Unfortunate SDs. actually, because I know a lot of people who are storing lots of their like emulated games and stuff on the SD cards on handhelds. This could actually be problematic, but it looks like Asus at least acknowledges the problem. They put out a statement. Uh, yeah, they reached out and they're actually saying that you can RMA your unit if your SD card did get affected by this. Uh, the only really downside is that if you put your micro SD card into the reader and it is malfunctioning, you probably lost it. It's probably yeah, it's dead. dead, Jim. It appears to be a problem with the VRMs being located extremely close to the micro SD center. Who to thunk? Who to thunk? Uh, VRMs get hot. Things oh. near the VRMs get hot too if they're not cooled properly. They are currently setting up a custom fan curve, which will be a temporary solution as they look into probably hardware revisions in the future. Yeah, they're gonna set that up as uh, an update that is just enabled by default. So hopefully it'll spare the lives of some micro SD cards. And hopefully your SD cards are still alive. But next up is some news that actually gets me very excited. What's that, Reese? Asrock's Radeon RX 7900 custom GPU is now available for only $799. If available you're in the US. If you're in the US. Mm. We all know and love the 7900 XTX. It's a lovely graphics card, competes toe to toe with the RTX 4080, sometimes better in certain titles, but it is now coming in at a $200 discount, uh, down from its original price of $999, which puts it substantially better position than the RTX 4080, which you can barely get under $1,000 these days. They pricey. The $799 price tag does come after entering the code ZIPTECH on Newegg, but it is uh, currently down to $899 before that discount code. So if you want one, pick it up. Solid. Maybe uh, maybe do that. Maybe this think might, about it. Is this going to be enough to switch you to Team Red considering the price points? I'll do it. I'll do it. I won't. I won't either. I, I'm lying. Reese, I just thought of something else that I read today. What? Did you know that the new 4090 Founders Edition GPUs are being shipped with a new connector? I did not know that. They're no. not melting anymore. Oh, that actually, that's very good news. <laughs> People have been trying all kinds of different things to try to get their expensive graphics cards to not literally melt. And Nvidia finally did something. Oh, it's that's awesome. great news. It seems they first included a new improved power connector with the RTX 4070, which rolled out a little while ago, but now the latest batches of 4090 Founders Editions are rocking with an improved tool v2 by 6 connector. This seems to have shortened sensing pins on the connector, so if not adequately plugged in, the sensing pins would not allow the card to draw full power and melt and go boom. Basically forces you to plug it in, right? Oh yeah. Which is what It's not gonna work, essentially, if you don't actually fully plug the... Which, good news, but I mean, this should have been there from the beginning. I like a little bit... You know how some people like to let the ice cream melt a little bit before yeah. you start eating it? Same when I was a GPUs. kid, I would just yeah. drink it up. Yeah. And that's what I do with my graphics cards now. Whoa! 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 whoa, whoa. Do you hear that? What is it? It's the sound of Reese standing up to switch spots with me to give you deals. <laughs> Boom. All right, welcome back to UFD Deals. We're bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet and we've got a couple of good ones for you. Today is the first day after Prime Day, so a lot of the Prime Day deals just pff, gone. But we do have a couple of leftovers and I kept the best ones for you guys. Starting off with this Western Digital SN850X NVMe M.2 SSD. This Gen 4 drive is currently going for only $229.99 for the four terabyte version. The MSRP is sitting a little high, but based on the recent price tracking, it's down another $70, which makes it a great buy, especially if you're trying to kit out your PS5 or a new build with something sizable like that. But next up, we have the ASRock Phantom 27 inch 1080p 240 hertz gaming monitor, currently going for $149.99 cents, making it also $70 off. Guaranteed to make you better at Counter-Strike. Absolutely. But if you're okay with sacrificing some of that speed for a little bit more resolution, then you can pick up the Acer Nitro kg 27 u This 27-inch 1440p monitor only goes up to 170Hz, which is still 
phenomenal and only costs a little bit more at $169.99, making it $80 off. But then next we have the Intel Core i7 13700K, which you can currently pick up for only $359.99 with the included promo code, making it $60 off. And then last but not least, we have our friends and channel sponsors, Jawa to thank for letting me actually choose a system on their site to showcase for you guys. I freaking love it. It's blue. It's blue. Today we have this gorgeous gaming PC from Pulsar Builds. It features a Core i3 12100F, an MSI Mech Radeon RX 5700 XT, 16 gigs of Oloy DDR4 RAM running at 3200 megahertz at CL16, all plugged into a Gigabyte H610 motherboard and powered by a 600 watt 80 plus gold power supply. They fit everything in a deep cool CG560 ATX mid tower case, which you can pick up as a whole for $650, which I think slaps for that price. And don't forget, you can enjoy a sweet $10 off your first Java purchase by by using the code WELCOME10 at checkout. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. Thanks once again to our friends and channel sponsors, Jawa, for letting us take a look at this. You can find the links to these and more in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you over back to Kyler for the rest of your hot news. As promised, we're gonna talk about this next story, Ratchet and Clank, those devs, they lied to you. They lied so they hard. lied. They said that th none of this game, the Rift Apart game, you remember that game came out for the PS5? They were like, oh, SSD is so fast. The SSD capabilities of the PS5 are amazing. That's the only way that we ever could have made this game possible. And they had the whole transition from like, Rift opening, you're, teleporting, you're, woo. You're going through the portals and you're like, wow, this is crazy. <coughs> Loading screens are a thing of the past. Well, turns out the SSDs had nothing to do with it because you don't even need an SSD to play this thing on the PC. They use GPU decompression at high graphics settings to stream assets in the background while playing, which is usually handled by the CPU. But now they're letting the GPU handle this, which apparently is easy enough for the APU inside the PS5 to do it. Yeah, maybe the SSD helps, I don't know. They're saying that 1440p at 60 FPS, you're gonna need a 3060 and either an i5-11400 or a Ryzen 5 5600, which is very middle of the road yeah, right it's, now. Yeah, it's very reasonable to be fair. I played through this game on PS5. I thought it looked absolutely gorgeous. It feels like you're playing a real-time Pixar movie. All right, so the PC port has been confirmed to have uh, DLSS 2 and 3 and FSR 2 and Intel X, is it XS or XESS? I don't know. I don't know exactly how to say that, but it is nice to know that we have those upscaling options because it will include expanded ray tracing for the PC version, which includes ray tracing reflections, ambient occlusion and shadows, whereas the PS5 version only supported reflections. Just like all these PC ports, you get the best, prettiest version on PC, even if it's two years down the line. And it's always buggier too. That's true. But it is important to note that on the very low graphics settings, they have listed that you can use 75 gigabytes of HDD space, but an SSD is recommended. But the fact that you could play it on a hard drive, I don't know yeah. how that would look. I just, I, I, I'm I'll believe it when I see it. Knowing how the game plays, I'm kind of interested to see how that's gonna run on a hard drive. There'll be videos about it. Oh yeah. And one thing I'm extra excited about is Cherry's launching an MX Experience box. Like the fruit? The, the whole fruit. Whoa! Except these ones you can't eat. You can, but don't. I'll eat them. This uh, doesn't make any sense why this wasn't a thing earlier. I, I have to agree. So Cherry, the German computer manufacturer who makes practically every little switch in your mechanical keyboards is now launching their experience box, which includes, I think it's 10? It has 10 switches inside of it, which is the exact amount that they sell. It gives you the opportunity to physically try all of these keys so you don't have to go looking up those weird YouTube videos that are ASMR like little. Uh, like that. Getting a feel for the switches yourself to see what you like before you end up ordering a full set for your mechanical keyboard. Why was this never a thing? It doesn't make any sense. And it's only 10 bucks. 10 bucks for a box. 10 bucks a box. And it looks like a little box of chocolates. Yeah. And then something that some of our viewers, a tiny little fraction, will be excited about is that Linux breaks 3% of the desktop market after 30 years. Wow, this is awesome. This is so exciting, guys. The year of Linux. Oh my goodness, that penguin sure is interesting. But it seems one of the biggest driving factors is that SteamOS is now getting super popular. A lot of people are switching to handhelds and even those running Windows handhelds are trying out Chimera OS, which is an attempt at SteamOS. Yeah, I'm sure the fact that a bunch of people are all of a sudden using Linux has nothing to do with the Steam Deck releasing a year ago. No, no, that couldn't be it, but it is it. The survey that we're pulling from also is showing that Windows still has almost 69% percent of, what would you call this, market share? Linux, you took the 69 from us. And then uh, Mac OS is at 21%, Chrome OS, 
four percent higher than Still Linux. Still more than Linux. Ooh, and boy. then unknown OSs are three point twenty four percent, which Linux is a part of. What what are those other ones? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to know. They're making a new PS5 controller too. How could we forget? Whoa! The ah. PS5 access controller is gonna launch worldwide on December sixth of this year. That is their new accessibility controller that has like this cool wheel with a whole bunch of like hot swappable. Yeah, the whole thing is completely things. modular, which is really cool. And you can hook it up with different controllers. You can hook it up with the original controller, so you get the touchpad capabilities. You, you can, can hook connect it up with two, two of them, and it supports up to four different third party accessibility controls via the 3.5 millimeter jack. It is something. If you're looking into giving this thing a pre-order, they open up on July 21st, the same day. Oppenheimer, Barbie, Pikmin 4. So many good things are happening that day, fellas. I think this thing is really cool. I love more accessibility options. Xbox came out with theirs sometime in 2018. Uh, it's about time PlayStation caught up. Moving on to Google Bard is now European. Google Bard is available all across the EU and it can speak 40 different languages now, which is like 40 more than I've got. Absolutely. Bard's product lead and Bard's VP of engineering made sure to mention that Google is covering all its bases. It seemingly was delayed due to privacy concerns which, I mean, it's fair. The EU is very, very strict on their privacy laws with many new regulations coming out, which it seems AI was in the firing lines with a lot of that. As part of our bold and responsible approach to AI, we've proactively engaged with experts, policymakers, and privacy regulators on this expansion, which might mean that they're looking to expand BARD completely worldwide by the end of the year. I would still like to give it a try and essay. I, I wanna know, have you guys tried out any search engine based AIs like Google's BARD or Bing's, what do they call it? Bing. The Bing thing. <laughs> Heimdall. Bifrost me. <laughs> That's what Acer said because they just launched their first Radeon GPU and it looks <laughs> just like their Arc GPU and it's the Bifrost family. <laughs> <laughs> and get this, they got blower fans in them. Honestly, it's like, it's weird to see blower fans making a comeback, but I don't hate this design with the big little fan. Listen, a blower fan just makes me think of a 1080 Ti. Beautiful card. I'll take a blower fan any day of the week. It appears that Acer is expanding the Bifrost lineup to include both the lower tiers of Intel and AMD on their Bifrost line, with them now putting out the Arc A750 as opposed to just the A770. But it seems on the Team Red side, they're starting with the lower end 7600 instead of going with the higher end offering first. It seems this way they can reuse the same cooler design, maybe get it out to market a little faster, but they have made it known that they would like to expand to the Radeon 7900 graphics cards, which they announced a collaboration with at Computex. Yeah, but back to this blower cooler, it's half half blower and half axial style, which is bizarre. Have we seen that before? Has that been a thing? Am I old enough to know about something? Do you, do <laughs> you little sweet old men that love to watch sometimes? Do you, do My you, bones you creak. seen this? Your bones creaking, seeing something like this? I wanna know. And it looks like the base Acer Bifrost RX 7600 is gonna start at $274. And if you wanna go with the overclocked edition, you're looking at $290. I'm all for companies expanding their lineup and diversifying which manufacturers they're actually making GPUs for. I would like to see a full stack of team green, red, and blue all coming from the same board partner. And hopefully we're heading towards that future. I'm glad to see that they're expanding on this. And I'm glad that this episode of Hot News is over because I'm extremely uncomfortable. Thank I'm you guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for sticking around with us. Uh, we're trying this. Uh, we want to give Brett a little break because he definitely needs to rest. Yeah, let us know. Do you hate this? Do you like this? Should, should we come back? Should we never show our faces again? Uh, I genuinely- On the entire internet. That, exactly. Uh, if not on Hot News, see you on Twitch. Bye.